Hello and welcome. My name is Johan Holtby and this is a tutorial series on how to use threads in Unity and how you could benefit from a tool which I have made. It's called Load Balancer and it's published on the Unity Asset Store. The tutorial series is mainly about threading in general, even though it uses my tool as its base, but you could apply this theory on anything, even though this first tutorial will mainly be about my tool and some parts about threading in general. So this tutorial series, why threading? What to think about? How my tool can help you? And implementation strategies. This is the topics and I will start with why threading. Normally uh, CPU today have many cores. So for example a quad core have four cores. One thread can only be divided uh, on one core. You cannot divide the thread between cores. So normally Unity runs everything in the main thread and therefore can only utilize one quarter of a quad core CPU. To help this, you need to thread your code and use many threads. And then each thread can run in one core in parallel. So a thread is an execution context which is running separately from the other threads. So normally the code is executed one step after another, but when you run with threads it's all executing in parallel. I said Unity doesn't use threads, that is kind of lying. It uses thread pools, I think, for networking and some rendering. The networking part I have found out to be a problem. When I added a lot of work to the thread pool, I started to see a lot of lag with three players or more. Two players were fine, but three players, it started to use thread pools, it seems like. And a lot of lag did occur. Also some rendering problems I've seen when you use thread pools. So do not use thread pools. And do not use a reader writer lock slim. The reason for this is that uh, using the, they also use the thread pools for the editor, I think. And therefore, if you're using the reader write lock slim, it has a lock in one thread, and then the thread pool switches the thread during the execution. This is normal for the thread pool. It's hold the thread and then put it in some storage and then put it back onto a thread. And it has only a limited number of threads, the thread pool, I mean. So therefore when you enter lock with a read write lock slim and then the thread pool returns the thread and then start a thread again, you will have a different thread and the lock is lost. Let's switch to some code. My tool has two main functions. It has a function to add work to the main thread and one function to add work to the threaded thread. And you may ask why it has a function for the main thread. It has a priority queue and it prioritizes everything and divides it between many frames. So each of the two functions have two queues, one priority and one normal. And the main also have a time consumed variable and this makes it possible to do many tasks in one frame. So if you add let's say 15 tasks with time consumed to 0 0.1, 10 will be executed the first frame and the five remaining the next frame. The reason for this is that one frame is equal to one and then it tries to do as many as it can in the priority order, which is dictated by the queues. There are also two functions, hold thread and clear all queues and start thread to start and stop the load balancer. So let's look at the functions in detail. The add threaded work has a work delegate, which is a function. And you can see the pattern here. It returns void and takes an object O. That O is the state object, which is stated here. So you can put anything you want into the function, even though it has the instance of the function permitted, uh, the function inserted. And the priority, lower value, is 
higher priority. The reason for this is that closer to the player you want to use the distance, then the more stressed it is to execute it immediately, normally. So therefore I've done this with a priority. And then two high priority queue. I said it has two queues, one normal and one high priority. And then you have unique sender and it has also the sender object. This makes it possible to only have one task in one queue in each queue, so one in normal and one in priority with this sender. So you can use this for example, or you can use another object which you want to make the uniqueness. This is quite neat because then you can push each frame the task which is currently most important for the class. For example, and then you don't need to execute those things which are no longer important. The main also add add main thread work also have a time consume variable here. So 0 0.1 equals one tenth of a frame, and so on. So let's look at some demo code. Here we have the two classes the uh, load balancer main test and the load balancer threaded test. The threaded test is executed every two frames and add work, which only outputs a message and then has all the parameters as public so it can edit it in the Unity editor. And the main also have time executed uh, or time consumed and it's executed every fourth frame. Let's see this in action. We start it. You see main work here as main work one, priority one, main work two, priority two, main work three, priority three, main work four, priority four, main work five. So this is demo one, if you get the two here, demo one. And main work six, priority six. But if we look in the console, we can see that thread one, two, three, four, which is this four. Are executed, but main one, two, three, four, five is only executed. Main work six is not executed. And if you look in the load balancer, you can see that the main thread standard priority queue length is just increasing. And this is main work six just adding up. So if you want to remove unexecuted, then this is equal to have unique sender. You see, it's set to almost nothing, so it's just clear it's every three. But if you want to make main work six execute, you can see main work one time consumed 0 0.9, which cannot be combined with 0 0.7. So, second frame for priority two, priority three, 0 0.5 can be combined with 0 0.4. So 3 and 4 is executed in the same frame. 0 0.5 is executed, but not 0 0.6, because this is 1.1 if you add them together. But if we change this to 8, you can see main 6 is starting to execute down here. You could also change this to 8.1, and you can see it stops. And if you change this to the high priority queue, then you will see that main six has been added as a new instance with a high priority and it's still outputting and main five have stopped. The reason for this is that main five cannot be executed with main six. So now the executioner's order is main work six, main work one, two, three, four, and main work five is ne never executed. And you can see it's also increasing in length. So we can also see that it's working in parallel. So if we duplicate this and we clear the console, you see main work one is increasing speed twice as fast as main work four, two, and three. And we can also do this many times. Um, it doesn't really affect the load band. You can just see it starting to stack up, but just removing it as fast as even possible. You can see the number of threads available is always high. 
Thank you for watching. This is all for this tutorial. And the load balancer is published in the Unity Asset Store. Link in the description. Improvements or requests, please leave them in the comments. And until next time, thank you and bye.